What an incredible African Cup of Nations this has been. Certainly one of the best that, that I remember in terms of entertainment, excitement, and of course quality as well, which has been really, really strong in this tournament. And we've had a fantastic opportunity for us on DNQ Ryan, to talk through some of the Minnow Nations. I mean, we, we've spoken about it, numerous videos we've done now on all these Minnow Nation sides, you know, particularly Gambia, Sierra Leone, Equatorial Guinea, to name just a few. But really, the plethora of sides that put in fantastic performances across AFCON. Is this one of the most exciting AFCONs that you can remember? I think it is. I think it is. I mean, I think now we look at AFCON through a slightly different lens um, because of DNQ, because we've got everything, everything Minnow Nation, we are all over. So I think we've looked at AFCON this time around slightly differently than we normally would. Now, in regards to AFCON as a tournament that delivers passionate performances and normally has a Minnow Nation that overcomes the odds and does ridiculously well. I think AFCON is a tournament that normally has that. You know, we think of a, I think 2015, my, my facts might be a little bit wrong here, so I, I apologise in advance, but I think Equatorial Guinea 2015 got to a semi-final. Madagascar got to a quarter or a semi-final 2017, 2019. Don't know, don't don't shoot me. Um, I'm not 1,000% clued up. But that's the whole picture, right? AFCON normally delivers. It normally has a, a nation... You know, not a, not a massive footballing nation that's known to the world that does exceedingly well in the tournament. Um, and I just think that this time round, it's been the best tournament for for that kind of uh, that kind of action. Basically, a minnow nation, a smaller, lesser known African nation, overachieving. Um, and we've been we've been blessed that it's mm. kind of happened now, whilst we are kind of in the, the early, still like the early months of, of running this channel where all we focus on is those Minnow Nations. We love reporting on it and because of the success of those teams, it's kind of brought, you know, from our point of view, mate, we've had way more people kind of view what we're doing on the channel because of the success of these nations. So we've loved it from the football, we've loved it from the Minnow Nations and then it's been so, so great to have more eyes on the channel and kind of showing what, what we do, you know. It's been really great, man. Absolutely. You know, just to kind of pick up on that last point, we started doing, when we started doing this, we didn't have any subscribers. I think we had two, which was me and you. I don't know if that counts. Um, and, you know, we slowly built up across a number of different continents. We did, we covered some tournaments in Asia. Uh, we spoke about the OFC World Cup qualifiers. And then AFCON going into it, I remember we discussed it and we weren't sure. We weren't sure what we were going to do. AFCON was almost a bit a bit too much of a big time tournament in many ways because, you know, obviously for us we compare it to like the um, the Euros uh, that we have in yeah. the UEFA region, and there's there's real limited passion in that, or, or even the Copa America, you know, in in South America, really limited passion in that tournament. But when we looked into it, and you look at some of the sides, and we've done spotlight videos on Gambia and Sierra Leone, for example. You re it really does bring home just what a fantastic tournament AFCON is. And like you say, I, I am really, we're very fortunate to have reached so many people, but I'm really glad that so many, particularly Gambia fans, but fans from all over Africa have got in touch and, and fans of these nations from all over the world as well. We've had comments from people in the US, which has been amazing. And it's it's really brought together what we, what we like to call the kind of DNQ community a bit. Fans of these minnow nations um, and I'm just so so pleased that they've that they've overachieved. But obviously, then the question is, and, and we talk about this ourselves. You know, we cover nations when we do these tournaments, and we think, okay, but what next? You know, when are we going to speak about these countries again? Because international football calendar, it's it, it's not the Premier League. It doesn't play week in week out. Well, you know, talk us through the next time some of these African minnows are going to kind of rear their heads again in international football. So. Some some are actually so much quicker than you think, mate. Mm. So the the main standout is Gambia. Obviously, the main standout is Gambia. Um, we've had a lot of kind of Gambia content on the channel, and that that will basically continue. Now they were only just recently knocked out in the quarterfinals by Cameroon. Uh, that two 0 defeat ending their their wonderful Afcon, oh, yeah. their, the wonderful maiden Afcon journey. Um, but they they return to action really really shortly because they have not automatically qualified for the group stage 
of AFCON qualification for AFCON 2023. So at the end of March, they are in the preliminary kind of first round of AFCON 23 qualification. They've got a double header against Chad, I believe, yes, Chad. Um, to basically try and qualify for the group stage of, of AFCON 23 qualification. So they are going from the highs of, of the quarter final and the amazing performance that they've put in to what is quite a, a little bit of a double legger shootout yeah. against Chad to qualify for the group stage to try and re-qualify for AFCON. So what's great from our point of view is they're going to be they're going to be back in and amongst it in a big international mm. match really really quickly which can't be said for for some of the others yeah um there are there's there's a number of question marks mate to be honest and we will keep our finger on the pulse as to kind of what's going on with these nations and what kind of other tournaments there might be now i was doing a little bit of you may or may not be aware now of, of kind of this tournament you, you might be you know we look at all sorts of these kind of rogue um, almost like regional tournaments and stuff don't we as well but Comoros and Malawi are really good examples of uncertain when these yeah. teams will next return now both did really really well in AFCON Comoros got knocked out in the last 16 by Cameroon 2-1 defeat the goalie was the left back and Mchangama with that amazing free kick um, and what a tournament they had Malawi, they got knocked out in the last 16 as well, this time by Morocco. And again, they scored a stunning goal and uh, Hakimi yeah. scored a cracker yeah. as well. That was an amazing game. Um, they're 129th ranked as well, so their performance was, was fantastic. Now, there's question marks over a, a kind of a regional tournament called the Kosafa Cup. And it's an international football tor um, tournament basically that consists of the national teams of member nations of the Council of South African Football Association, right. CASAFA, basically. Now, I'm not sure if there is going to be one this year. Um, the main thing with Comoros is the last tournament that took place was, I believe, 2020 or 2021. I'm not certain, I apologise. But Comoros essentially withdrew from competing in the 2021 version, 2020-2021 version of that CASAFA Cup. Malawi um, didn't, but it's whether the tournament is going to take place in 2022. So big question marks over that, but we could be seeing Comoros and Malawi return in that kind of tournament format. Another tournament, mate, that's got a question mark, and I was kind of going to open this up to you because I, I don't quite know where this sits within the African footballing calendar. Maybe some of the, the viewers that are watching can help us by, by leaving some comments. You know, we are always super, super keen to learn so much more about all of these tournaments that are happening on the international stage. But Equatorial Guinea that we know, they were also knocked out in the quarter-final stage of the AFCON, just gone uh, by Senegal, 3-1 defeat. Senegal are now in the final, I think, aren't they? Mane, yeah, the time of recording here, Mane scored late on to secure that win against Burkina Faso. Now, the kind of next tournament that they would, in theory, be involved in, or, or kind of they would be involved in the qualification stage of that tournament, is something called the African Nations Championship, yes, yeah. which is a different, which is a different tournament to yeah. Afcon. Yeah. Anyway, I've been reading that the the qualification for that will take place this year again at some point in 2022, but. I'm not, I'm not, sh I'm not sure when that is. I kind of don't really know the parameters of that tournament, of that African Nations Championship. If, if it's only for the top ranked teams in Africa, do, do you know? Much? I believe it's actually the opposite. Um, it's okay. Yeah, it's a strange one. I, I've, I remember when I was pulling together our international football calendar, looking at this and coming yeah. across this tournament, and I wasn't sure if it was defunct or if it still went ahead. Uh, and I think that that's what we struggle with, with, you know, even the Kasafa, like you've mentioned, because there's the Kakafa as well, there as we is, know, yeah. Eritrea are taking place. A lot of these tournaments, they just sort of, yeah, we'll do it next year, you, you know, and it's yeah. really tough for us to keep track of. And when we speak about sides like Equatorial Guinea, um, it's not certain. And, and I think, you know, African sides in general, and I think that's one of the big things, is the reason why AFCON is so important is... Even if sides don't get there, you know, Chad, Eritrea, the Seychelles, these are sides now competing in the preliminary round. 
yeah. you know, and, and this gives them international fixtures that they wouldn't otherwise have. And, you know, we, we speak about Oceana. These sides never play. You have, I have no idea about these sides at all, and they, it, it's really difficult to keep track of. But one thing I love about Africa and all the tournaments that we've seen is that they do take place. But certainly, like you say, both the Kasafa and the African Nations Cup, which isn't the African Cup of Nations, um, we need to keep track of. We need to keep track of. Yeah. But it's going to be one that we're going to have to update on as more information comes out. And, you know, this international calendar, let, let's not forget, we started DNQ at what turned out to be a great time because... All of 2020s and 2021s tournaments were pushed so far right. A lot of yeah. them have at least, you know, skipped an iteration. AFCON is next year again. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, your two-year qualification window for this tournament squished into one. And don't forget, you've got a World Cup in November, December anyway. You know, how are they going to balance all these things together? Well, we don't know. But if you do want to listen to just two morons try and work out what the international calendar is and talk about some of your favourite teams, you, you know, and, and speak to you guys in the comments and, and chat to you guys. We've got Instagram, we've got Twitter and stuff. Then DNQ is the place to be. And uh, and the last thing I want to touch on really in this video, Rai, is uh, some of the cool interviews that we got coming up. Or at least we're really, really, really hopeful that we got them coming up. Um, yeah. We've spoken about Mo Barrow as well. But um, this, this tournament for us in many ways has been an introduction to African football. We've not touched on... Africa much before uh, but it's definitely a, a region of world football that we intend to touch on so much more and actually we've got a, a Seychelles special uh, coming up with Way Hive coming to speak to us and also uh, a coach from the Seychelles has reached out and, and wants to come and speak to us as well about what actual coaching life is like in the Seychelles and, and that's sort of why we do this really because we love finding out about this stuff you, you know, to a lot of people in the UK, the Seychelles is just a glorious holiday destination. But to us, we want to hear about the actual football side of it, the coaching side of it. There's so much brilliant football in Africa. We love watching it. We love hearing about it. We love finding out about it. And I hope that you guys have all enjoyed our coverage. Ryan, any final points from you today, my friend? Mate, nothing to add apart from if you have any insight or any information... Mm on any of the points we've spoken about on some of these regional tournaments, please do get in the comments, drop some thoughts, drop some information, because we are thirsty to learn about anything and everything. Um, and that, that's it. That's it from me. Keep, keep the comments coming. Um, if you're new to the channel, like and subscribe. Absolutely. Good plug. And, <laughs> exactly. uh, and as ever, we will see you next time. You're about to have a nice playlist flash up on your screen of African football and uh, and that is all from us we will see you next time